Yo, what's up guys? Back again, you've been hearing a lot from my colleagues. And today we're gonna to be starting a new series, the Quantum Traders Toolkit. So we're gonna to be doing a more introductory course called the Quant Traders Toolkit. And then we're gonna be doing the Quantum Traders Toolkit. And every single video that we put out is going to have a matching article that will go into the details, which you can see here on our Medium page. We'll link it in the description. And if you want the details, you can come here. There's plenty of articles on different topics. And today we're gonna to be covering the quantum computing demystified part one. And so this is going to be just the coding, but if you want, the math and the explanation behind this, then I suggest you guys go over there, check it out, and read through it before you take on the coding so you know it's actually happening. But now we have a quick little tutorial of the very basics using the Quantum Information Software Kit by IBM. All right. So now we have our code and you have NumPy and then we have the quantum information software kit. And this is IBM's SDK. And what it does is it translates Python into quantum machine language. And it lets us work with quantum computers on the level of circuits, algorithms, and pulses. And today we're just gonna go over some of the very, very simple basic ideas that have to do with this. So if you've read the article, which hopefully you have, because if not, you're probably gonna be lost. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is figure out how to make a state vector. And it's as easy as we can import it. And so now, We'll make a state vector u and the 2.j in python is the same as an imaginary number so it's the same as i we're just going to make by three and now that we have the state vector a cool thing that you can do is really easily you can draw it by making u.draw, and then we're gonna say, do that in latex. And so now you can see our state vector, which is really nice just for visualizing and seeing how it evolves as you get more complex circuits or more complex operations that you apply. And so you're able to see where your state starts, you're able to see where your state ends. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is a histogram plot, which lets us first, we can measure, which lets us figure out the state that it's in and also see what the state vector looks like after the measurement. And if we'd like to do a series of measurements, we can do trials and just sample counts and however many you'd like. Now, we can plot the trials and very quickly we can see the count of our measurements of zero and one. So as you can see, this can get, this can take something quite complex and make it incredibly easy to do the basic things like measure a quantum state vector or in our next part, we're going to make a couple operators and apply them to our state vector. So I'm going to copy and paste over the poly operators, which are common operators that you can learn more about in our, our Medium article. And then we're gonna do a H operator because this is also a frequent operator that you'll see as well as the S and T operator. 
So as you can see, this is no different than defining an array in NumPy. The only difference is that we've used the operator from our quantum information software kit. And so we can have those. And in order to, so now we're gonna just make u equal to another state vector, a simple one with zero, with one and zero. And what we're gonna do is show you how you would use the operators on u. And so the more manual way to do this would be u.evolve and then the operator. So if I wanna use a series of these, all I have to do is keep evolving u. And I can draw this, I can see how it evolves as I apply each operator, or I can just see what happens at the end of this. And so now with u.draw, we can see that this has changed from the state vector of one zero. Now, to do this in a more efficient way, we have most of these operators already predefined. And so all we have to do is define a quantum circuit, which we're gonna call sir, because we're creative. And now we just have the same operators, but we don't have to define each one. So if we're using any of the basic or standard operators, we're able to just whip them out. Saves us a lot of time. And then we can draw our circuit. So you can see that on our qubit, we've applied H, S, H, Z, Y. So we've applied it from here to there, and you can see in what order. And this gets more important as you start to make more complex and connecting circuits. But for now, just to show you the absolute basics that you can maybe start to tinker with, we're just gonna have one and show how they're applied as first to last. There's nothing crazy about it. It's super easy. So now, if we want to see how our state vector one zero gets affected as we apply it to a state vector, we can just, again, we'll use our state vector and we can evolve using our circuit. So now we can make v is v.evolve and circ. And that's going to apply it in this order to our original state vector. And we can draw, which you will see has, again, done the exact same as when we manually did it. But if we want to keep applying these gates to different state vectors, then it would make sense that you want to define it in a quantum circuit and just reuse it over and over and over again. And so with this as well, we can do the same thing with trial. And then we can plot it just as easy. And those are the absolute basics to using this. And it's these are a bunch of functions and methods that you're going to be able to use very often, very frequently. And after you've read through the article, or if you're coming to this with a basic understanding of quantum computing or the notation for quantum physics, you'll really kind of understand what the background that's happening is. And you'll see how easy it is to apply these more complex topics and to do it so quickly, which is why this is so useful. And it allows us to, in an open source environment, play around with quantum computing, which for a long time wasn't that accessible.
and you get to play around with it in a py in Python or a language that you're familiar with. And so this is just the first. There are going to be many more beginner parts to the series that are just going over the basics. And the plan is then to evolve into using this for trading and doing quantum Monte Carlo simulations or showing various use cases that we can use it for trading. And I think as anyone who wants to be a quant, it becomes pretty important to stay on the cutting edge of technology and at least familiarize yourself with it. It doesn't mean that quantum computing is always going to be the answer. There are going to be cases where classical computing is the better option, but certainly as it evolves, knowing how to use it and how to exploit the things that it does do better will be important for you making, making all the bands that you want. So feel free to check out our Medium article to familiarize yourself with the actual background information. It would take us way too long and be way too boring to go through in a YouTube video. And if this isn't your speed, but you're stumbling like right onto our stuff, maybe you go head out to the quantum toolkit or the quant traders toolkit and give us a like, follow, subscribe. We're gonna keep putting out good content and it's just gonna get better and better and hopefully help you find more and more edge and more alpha.